Conversations. We're your host, Carl. Interesting people. And now, this week's conversation. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to another edition of Conversations. I'm Carl Kozlowski, your host. As always, we're bringing you the most interesting people from the worlds of pop culture, politics, and beyond. This week, I'm excited to be bringing a very talented and veteran uh, comedy writer named Patrick Walsh. He was born and raised in St. Charles, Missouri, and went on to become an intern or an NBC page at Late Night with Conan O'Brien and Saturday Night Live. But for the past 11 years, since 2006, actually 12 now, Walsh has been working in a number of uh, big sitcoms as a writer. He worked on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, as well as a writer-producer on NBC's Outsourced, and on the smash hit CBS series Two Broke Girls. But right now, he is creator and executive producer of the new CBS sitcom Living Biblically. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Patrick Walsh. All right, thanks for joining us, uh, Patrick. Uh, congrats on the show. It's uh, pretty exciting to uh, have your own uh, show on Big Time Network there. So that's pretty cool. So uh, how did it come about? Uh, the How did you get involved with Living Biblically? And I'm friends with A.J. Jacobs. I read the book years ago and I've interviewed him about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a great thing to see it finally hit TV. So just wondering, like, you know, what was the key to making this happen on CBS now? Uh, well, thank you, Carl, and good morning. I, um, it came to me through Johnny Galecki's production company. Um, I had been going around looking for a, an idea for a show to write. And I just kept hearing the same things, you know, uh, same pitches, uh, six single people living in New York, uh, guy moves back in with his parents, et cetera. And they had the rights to this book and I was blown away by it. I had not read it. I took it home. I read it in a night and I was very intimidated by it. There is not a lot of entertainment on television about religion, yeah. but I felt like I, I felt like I could do it. Um, I, 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 th I knew I needed to give uh, our lead character a little more motivation. AJ was essentially writing the book, um, you know, as, as a stunt to sell books. And it was a fantastic book and I loved it. Yeah. But in terms of television, I, I knew he needed a, another way in to living his life by the Bible or else people would, would tune out. Um, so I thought, well, why do people turn to religion if, the, if they've drifted away? And I gave him two reasons. One is that his best friend passes away and he feels uh, lost, rudderless. Um, and the other is that his wife tells him she's pregnant, our lead character, Chip. And he feels very ill-equipped to raise a child. He doesn't know how he's going to do it. So he says, I'm going to do this for the nine months till the baby arrives. I'm going to live my life 100% according to the Bible. And, um, you know, for me, the goal of the show was to make a show that was funny to everyone, funny to Christians and funny to non-believers. And that, that was the goal. And I, I hope we succeeded. But, um, you know, there's just, there's no entertainment really for people of faith, um, on, on TV or in movies. It's, and when there is, it's so solemn and serious and heavy that I thought there was, uh, just a real hole in the market for, for something like this. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about, uh, was it hard selling CBS or any other network on the idea because it's so rare or, uh, were they actually pretty open to it? Uh, it was surprisingly easy for all. We, we sold it to the four major networks, which was shocking to us because we thought it was going to be a much harder sell. But I think what they responded to was just that, you know, my pitch was very much, um, I am a, I am a respectful, curious, interested, fascinated, uh, person by, by religion. And, you know, 80, I, I, the way you have to kind of sell, sell a show is tell them that people will watch it. And I said, you know, 84% of the world aligns himself with some form of religion. And I don't think they're being served every week on television. Um, and then you also have to convince them, of course, that your goal is not to make fun, that you're not going to be a lightning rod for controversy, which is not our goal. But, you know, everyone I know who, who is religious discusses it with a lot of warmth and humor and, and uh, 
you know, I don't know how it became such a um, you can't can't go there kind of topic. You know, we wanted to have fun with it, but also be really just respectful, you know, and uh, I think there's so much there's so, there's so many more interesting episodes to be mined from a topic like this than another show about, you know, people going on dates or whatever it may be. We had such a great time in the writer's room having these discussions, you know, really passionate, interesting discussions, and then even better discussions when we brought in our advisors. We had a priest and a rabbi advise us on the show as well. Huh, that's great. So, um, yeah. how do you, what do you feel about the climate right now for a show to be so positively Christian and Catholic? I think you're definitely on to something that there's so many people out there, it's ridiculous they don't do more uh, that caters to the, to that audience. But I'm still stunned every time I think about the show. I mean, I'm just like, I can't wrap my head around, wow, they're actually going to do something that's, like you said, not solemn and actually entertaining yeah. and yet, like, 1,000% positive. It blows my mind. It really does. Well, I mean, thanks. That That is the goal. I, I hope it is um, received that way. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, of course, there there is always a concern um, amongst religious people when they hear about a project like this, and I know this from just reading internet comments, which I have learned my lesson and will not be doing anymore. Yeah. But they'll announce the show, and everyone says, "Oh, great! They're going to make fun of us. They're going to make fun of us. They're going to make fun of my lifestyle, etc." And it, it's it's a real bummer for me that, uh, and I get why. I get why because. So often that is how uh, Christians are treated on television and in films. Um, so I get the skepticism, but I hope that it doesn't scare them off from actually watching the show and trying it and seeing that it's um, at its core a very uh, pro-faith show as it shows the positive impact it can have on your life. Yeah, no kidding. So um, what was the biggest challenge in adapting the book? I mean, you already expressed like giving a better motivation was there anything else that was different or was it did you guys actually use multiple uh points of you know taking ideas from aj's book or was it just the general overall idea that was the same um i would say you know for the most part it was the it was the general overall idea but the the book is so well written and and so um in depth into a lot of this stuff that for me, it worked as a great guide in terms of the tone of the show. The tone of the show was very, very tricky to find um, because we have an audience of 200, 250 people in the, in the stands each week that watch the show live. Um, I always said, give me a mix of religious people and non-religious people. And you can hear the audit. You can hear from the audience what, what is too far, what is not in depth enough when they're, when they're completely invested in something and when they're not, so for me, that was the hardest thing was nailing down the tone. And the book was a great guide for that. Um, in that the book, the book too, is just a curious um, sort of probing discussion of this book that so many people uh, base their lives around. And yet, you know, at times don't fully comprehend. Um, and I didn't fully comprehend it. So there, there were... For, for me, th those were the bigger issues of the show were just trying to wrap your head around these massive, complex issues that, you know, even religious scholars have been debating for forever and making it into a 20 minute sitcom every week. That was the trickiest part for me. But I think we did it. I think we, you know, got them down to um, easily digestible kind of uh moral tales, these little nuggets each week that really go in depth to a biblical issue, but also, um, you know, aren't going to make anyone feel left out, these shows. Okay. And has the show working on it, um, it made your faith deeper at all, or were you already pretty devout, or uh, you know, any, how would you describe that impact? Uh, I, I would say much like, much like Chip. I mean, Chip, uh, they say, right, what you know, the, the lead character of Chip was essentially myself. And um, I, like Chip, was raised devout Catholic. I went to church every Sunday um, through college and public school religion, which is, uh, you know, at, in Missouri where I grew up, that's what we did. It was a three-hour course every week for people who didn't go to Catholic school. 
Um, but I, I would say I had, I had drifted away from it to some degree. Um, and this show very much brought it all back. You know, I, the question I get a lot was what, what were you shocked by from the Bible? And the answer was not much because it all comes back to you so quickly. Um, and yeah, to, to answer your question, I, I would say it, it definitely sort of brought me back, um, to, to that mindset. I, I spend all my time now reading the Bible, of course, for the show and talking to this, uh, you know, priest and rabbi who advise us. And, um, it's an, it's an interesting thing more than any show I've ever worked on. You know, I take this show home with me. It's, uh, you can't help, but, but think about these things, um, when you're talking about them all day. And I, I hope other people do the same. I hope it inspires conversation amongst families. I hope, it works its way maybe into a homily at, uh, at, at mass some Sunday. And, um, uh, that's my ultimate goal of the show is that it just gets people talking about these issues in a, in a respectful manner. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then, um, was wondering also, how do you guys know where to draw the line? Because obviously your goal is not to offend and AJ's book was pretty genial about it all. But, um, do, do you, is it basically by consulting with the priest and the rabbi that, uh, you have in the room, like, you know, do you guys just run anything that might toe the line by them or something else? Yeah, I, I mean, we're not looking to to uh, aggressively push the button or anything, but the, where the priest and the rabbi were most helpful is in saying, um, you know, a, a priest wouldn't say this. Uh, a, a priest would not be this judgmental. A priest uh, would not allow this, things like that. Um, and just little details about the lifestyle of a priest and a rabbi and their day-to-day -day life. That stuff was really interesting to hear as well. Um, but in terms of knowing when you've crossed the line, that, that always comes from the audience. They're, they'll, they'll let you know if by their laughter or their lack of laughter if you are uh, you know, ticking people off or if they're really enjoying what you're doing. Well, are you guys finding audiences, are you recruiting audiences that you know are uh, faith-based, or are you um, just dealing with strangers? Because I was wondering... Like and then, how would you know whether their reaction is indicative of, uh, you know, what you're going for, what the home audience might be that seeks it out? Well, it's it's always tricky to get an audience for a first year show because they don't they don't know what it is. It yeah. hasn't been on television yeah. yet. But I said, you know, let's do our absolute best to get a good mix of um, Christian and non Christian people in the audience, religious and non religious people in the audience. So they would uh, do some recruiting, you know, send out to church groups. We're doing a show called Living Biblically. Do you want to come see it? And uh, we always had at least one church group in the audience. Huh. But um, it's also, it was important to me to have people who had no idea what they were walking into and make sure they enjoyed it too. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of what TV is, especially network television, you're flipping through the channels and oh, we'll see what this is. So we're trying to get, you know, the, the most... Um, I guess, diverse uh, representation of America we could get in our audience. And for the most part, you know, by and large, they really went with it. And uh, even when the show's got, we, we do a whole show about prayer and the, it, does, does prayer work? Does it matter if prayer works? It, what is the importance of prayer? Uh, and it, it got very heavy and, and kind of, uh, you know, it, it was still very funny, but it, it was about a, a subject matter you just don't see on a, on a network sitcom. And I got to tell you, I would look up at the audience and they would be just riveted by it. And it was, I think, for me, I think it was because they're seeing discussions um, about really fascinating subjects that people talk about all the time in their private life, but for whatever reason um, is taboo for entertainment. And I was trying to sort of gently break that taboo, I guess, and get people talking. Yeah, that's great. So... Um... I was wondering also uh, about in your own career, this is a big switch from working on shows like Sunny in Philadelphia to Broke Girls. I'm a fan of both those shows personally. I'm just saying that those are really different shows. So I was just wondering, yes. um, what, and also, you know, so listeners know, you also worked on Outsource, which was a pretty, you know, uh, middle of the road uh, uh, clean show. But I'm uh, just wondering, like, what's your favorite kind of comedy to do? And if you lean clean, was it hard dealing with those past shows? What was the last sentence? I'm so sorry. If you lean towards being a clean writer, was it uh, difficult yeah. working on shows like Two Broke Girls, where it's like they themselves say, yeah, we found a million ways to joke about Vijay you know what I mean? 